He wasn't quite sure what went wrong, just that the engines blew and flung him hard against the wall and him the only crew. He felt like he'd been broke in half, he passed out twice from pain. And when he heard the voices, he was sure he'd gone insane. Just two of them at first it was, and then a dozen more. He blinked to see two women kneel beside him on the floor. He thought they might be angels, but they weren't like angels much. No wings, no robes, just plain gray spacer coveralls and such. You're not dead yet, my friend, and it's not quite your time to go. The first one said, now look, your rescue beacon's down below. Ed says that there's another ship not far away at all. You still have two good arms, my friend, so grit your teeth and crawl. They winked out then, the pain clamped down, he thought he'd move no more. Another one appeared and sat beside him on the floor. Come on to marriage, this one urged, you'll make it, I don't doubt. Show me some of this Yankee guts I've heard so much about. It seemed to take eternity to crawl from here to there. The pain at least a hundred times was more than he could bear. But every time he'd start to quit, fly down, give up and die, another would appear beside him, urging him to try. He reached the beacon in a daze of fever mist and pain. He hit the activator and he saw them once again. Remember, friend, the woman said, when death is closing fast. It's then you try your hardest, for the darkness will not last. He passed out then, the rescue came, they brought him safely home. And he forgot it all, until he got to Luna Dome. He passed beneath a hologram that stands above the door, and recognized those faces there, he'd seen them all before. Gus and Ed and Roger made him hold to hope and try. The Russians, Ronald, Krista too, they wouldn't let him die. He knew whose words had saved him, and he knew that in the end, he'd go to join their company and greet them as a friend.